talking about love and commitment without monogamy. Shortly, we're going to meet a married couple who each have a long-term lover, and all four of them are friends. And we're also going to speak with a woman who tried an open marriage with her husband, but it did not turn out so well. But first, are monogamish relationships on the rise? And are they more common today than they used to be? Dr. Terry Conley is an associate professor of psychology at the University of Michigan. She has studied sexuality for the past seven years, and her findings may astound you. And Dr. Steven Snyder is a professor of psychiatry at Mount Sinai and the author of Love Worth Making. He's got years of experience working with couples in all sorts of relationships. Welcome to you both. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so you say don't shoot the messenger because you've been studying <laughs> relationships for a long time, including non-monogamous ones. First of all, let me ask you, because I know monogamous couples don't always re react well to your data. <laughs> data, I say. <laughs> first of all, w levels of happiness, the same in a monogamous couple versus non-monogamous? Yes, and, and I want to emphasize that there's nothing in my research that suggests that people who are monogamous should try to be non-monogamous if they don't want to. But yes, I generally find that people who are in consensually non-monogamous relationships are actually just as happy as people who are in monogamous relationships. And is it true they're less jealous, generally? Yes. So although I often hear people say that you absolutely have to be monogamous because people can't handle jealousy, we are finding that people who are in consensually non-monogamous relationships actually report less jealousy than people who are in monogamous relationships. That's so, I mean, that wasn't the case in our, in our opening guest's case, but I guess it goes, you know, a person-by-person -person basis. Well, and I should say that people in consensually non-monogamous relationships do experience jealousy. It's not that they don't, but they learn to manage it. And so they can deal with it, Why would they be less jealous when they're partner, they know their partner is sleeping with somebody else? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. I think one of the things is they come into the relationship as being less jealous people to start off with. Mm. And that's probably one of the reasons why this type of a relationship is appealing to them. So that's one of the reasons why I say this isn't for everybody. No, because you know, as like in the commercial break, I, I asked the audience, like, who would consider doing this? And every woman in the audience was like, <laughs> right? Like, so, Dr. Snyder, what do you think? I mean, is this, is this on the rise, this sort of choice? It's a great question. I'm a sex therapist, so people only come to see me when they're having problems. And usually, after nothing else has worked. So I see the people who are really having problems. Yeah. And uh, the basic message when it comes to monogamy, non-monogamy is you don't want to do it just because you think it's going to solve a problem. Non-monogamy is not the solution to a problem. See, but if my husband came to me after years of being in a committed monogamous relationship and then marriage and said, I want to try an open marriage, yeah. I'd say what you're really looking for is a divorce or a exactly. permission slip to go cheat. Yeah. Denied. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So the first question. <laughs> one really common situation that I hear is one person, usually the guy, wants a non-monogamous relationship, and the woman has the exact reaction that you. Mm -hmm. So she kind of gets hounded about it, and that never works. But let's say that both people are thinking about it. So we're going to walk all the way. Both people are thinking about it. The basic question is, are you happy together? Because if you're not happy together, it's usually a mistake to open up the relationship. I always say... But, but I, I, my brain is stuck on that, because yeah. I feel like if you are happy together and you're in a monogamous relationship, then you don't want to go sleep with other people. It, that's not always Is true. Is that wrong? That's not always true. Um, some people can be happy together, but they're not particularly jealous souls. They're uh, people who are kind of built for more expansive relationships because there are a few people who are like this. That's, and, but the, the problem that a lot of these folks face is they are a minority, right? Mm -hmm. So you not have to be okay with being a minority because while your data suggests folks can be very happy in these relationships, they, it's not very well accepted. No, it's not well accepted at all. It's one of the most stigmatized groups that I've ever had the chance to study. People have exceedingly negative reactions to this arrangement. And a lot of times, I think it's not about the people themselves, but the people who see this feel threatened. Mm -hmm. They feel like this reflects on their relationship or their choice to be monogamous. And it really doesn't. Well, or they're, they're worried that their spouse is going to bring it home as a suggestion to them. Right? <laughs> That's possible, too. Because, yes. it's you know, when you enter into a marriage, there's a covenant. There's a deal. It's like you struck the deal. You sign out of the deal. You sign on the bottom. That's it. The deal is done. Don't go back and try to renegotiate. Right? And we don't want that. Those of us who have chosen monogamy don't want anybody questioning that or throwing doubt into that. But these couples aren't, they're not 
it's no comment on us. No, they're not trying to convert yeah. anyone. With my data, I'm never trying to convert anyone. I would just encourage people to allow people to make their own choices and try to support the other people's choices as okay, well. Okay, you know that there are going to be a lot of people sitting at home watching this saying, but what about the children? Is, mm -hmm. this, is this unhealthy for the children? Are they confused? What say you on that? You've got the data. So I actually haven't studied this myself, but... Elizabeth Sheff, who's a sociologist, has done extensive work with this group and has found that actually the polyamorous, the children of polyamorous parents are doing really, really well. Um, they feel loved. They have multiple parental figures sometimes, and that makes them feel supported. Uh, they don't have a hard time with stigma just because our world is kind of crazy anyway. You know, every, mm -hmm. dad's got a girlfriend or mom's uh, remarried, and so they don't really feel like they're stigmatized that much. And they're a group that's actually doing very, very well. Mm -hmm. I think it's also to remember that these people are pioneers. This is really the first generation of polyamorous people. Yep. So really nobody knows how this is going to turn out in the long run. And I think your research shows, uh, Dutch Connolly, that uh, this is really one of the most highly stigmatized groups in existence. By the way, just so, so we understand, open marriage is when you're married with somebody and you're allowed to sleep with others, and everybody understands that. Swingers, that's when you're married... A couples married and they they together go sleep with other couples right <laughs> yes, yeah. basically and polyamory is what in polyamory you're allowed to fall in love is basically what i say so the a primary couple might decide that it's okay to have sexual relationships with others and it's also okay for those relationships to be romantic and loving and so whereupon the women stuck their arms even <laughs> farther underneath <laughs> the armpits all right but it's happening it's happening Thank hello today fans thanks for checking out our youtube channel subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.